Hey everyone, this is my fifth or sixth video. I lost count. On chapter three of Ramachandran's book, titled Loud Colors and Hot Babes, Synesthesia, however you say it. Okay, so first off, no mention in the chapter about hot babes. I mean, come on, Ramachandran. Let's get your act together here. Uh, I know it probably have something to do with the metaphor, but, you know, it's kind of misleading. Anyways, so, page 100, when he's talking about uh, the axon connections, the cross wiring between the. Uh, Two regions of the brain, basically, between the V4 and fusiform gyrus, and how maybe the connections between the two kind of causes this cross wiring that enables people to basically have this synesthesia experience. So that seems like a pretty awesome explanation to me. It makes a lot of sense. Then he goes on to say that. It's not the complete explanation because people with LSD have synesthesia experiences as well, even though they don't have any of this increased connection between these two areas. So, I get what he's saying here, but people on LSD, are they really synesthetics? And they're experiencing synesthesia, but does that make them syn? aesthetics. I don't think so. Because it's not natural to them. They have to have a drug to be able to make them do this. Well, on the other hand, the people that actually have synesthesia just, boom, happens all the time. So, I really think that it is the connections. And then, he, then on, I mean, check this out. It goes on on uh, page 100. When he talks about this ex experiments by uh, Ed Hubbard and Jeff Boynton, that they found an increased substantially more axons linking V4, the color region of the brain, and the grapheme area in lower synesthetes compared to the general population. And even more remarkably, in higher synesthetes, they found a greater number of fibers in the general vicinity of the angular gyrus. And he goes on to say this is precisely what we had proposed. Now this sounds like a genetic basis to me, I mean, you think about it, you don't have the gene for it, you don't have these strong cross connections, you are heterozygous for the gene, you have the intermediate connections, you maybe have uh, um, kind of a intermediate synesthesia, or this uh, lesser synesthesia, synesthetics is what they call it. Then if you're, you know, homozygous for the gene, and, I don't know, dominant or recessive, I don't know, you can maybe, uh, you'd be a higher synesthetic, and you have these increased axonal connections. I think that's a fantastic explanation. The inhibition also makes sense, too. But on the other hand, this goes back to the whole thing with LSD being, are you actually a synesthetic when you're on LSD, just because you experience synesthesia? No. Um, yeah, besides so that, thought it was an interesting chapter, not gonna lie, I fell asleep halfway through it, but it was long, so yeah, good stuff, and uh, I'm enjoying this book so far.